You're watching BCTV, Brantford's Community Access Station. Welcome to Classroom Connections. Today's guest is a friend and an absolutely fabulous artist. Her name is Clara Nardi. Clara, I'd like to welcome you to the show. Thank you, Jane. I am so thrilled to have you here. Your work is absolutely fantastic, and I'd like to get right into it. You like to work with three different styles, and we're gonna start with the figurative style. Mm -hmm. First, tell me, what does figurative mean? Um, I call the pieces that I make which have um, some form of the human being in it figurative. It could be the entire human being or it could be parts of the human form, maybe the hand or the feet or some part of the human form. And those are the pieces I call my figurative pieces. Well, and we'll talk about both of them, but the first thing I like to start with is this piece over here. Mm -hmm. Now this person is near and dear to your heart. Who is who is this little fella? This is my youngest son, Macri. And um, how old is he at the time? His he was two years old when I, I did that. How old is he now? He's five. Oh, he's still a little guy. He is. He just started kindergarten. Wow. So tell me about the piece. What, what, how, what, how was the process come about? Well, Macri always carried his blankie and his milky. Well, I want to just say, we have that blankie right here. Yeah. And you told me that she had to go to kindergarten today to actually rip it from the kid's hands. Yeah. And was it hard for him to leave it? Um, he didn't know that I had taken it. I, I swapped <laughs> it with another blankie. Oh, good, good. <laughs> so that, that's cute. Yeah. So she brought it here just to kind of, because I asked her to, you know, the representational pieces, and, and you can see the absolute match. Yeah. So he always likes his blankie and his milky, did yes, you say? Yes, yes. And I just wanted to save, capture the, his moment in a, in a piece of art so that we could always cherish it. So I created this piece to uh, remember Maki when he was, he was a baby and carrying his blankie and milky with him all, all the time. That is sweet. Mm -hmm. How did we get, how did, what was the process in this? I started with a photograph. Now we have the photograph here, mm -hmm. so I'm going to have you grab one side of it. Mm -hmm. So, and um, I'm just going to move, there we go. And th this is a photograph, but I'm noticing there's nothing in the background. I used the photo um, editing software to remove the background because I was interested in this part of the photograph, not the, the background. It was actually taken in the kitchen, in my kitchen. I didn't want the kitchen to show, I wanted just him and his blankie and milky to show mm -hmm. and the piece of artwork that I was going to create. So I took the photograph and then I, I took it to Kinko's and blew it up into this size and traced it out onto a tracing paper, which I have here. Okay, so you took it, you blew it up, mm -hmm. and then let me see some of the paper that you traced it onto. And that's an important part of the process? Yes, that's, that's how I start. I need to get the outline Just, okay, so I'm gonna just hold this up again. Mm -hmm. So you, and that's just tracing paper. Just tracing paper. And so this is it. I just traced it out, traced the outlines out to get an idea of where to place the pieces. And since this looks so big and complex, it's, it's difficult and daunting to start a piece like this. So I broke it down into smaller pieces, traced them onto smaller, size pieces. So this here is the blanket. I see. So I broke it up into smaller pieces. This is his hand, one of his hands here. I see. So these are the pieces that I work with now, and that's this. This is put aside, and I work with the small pieces, trying to put these small pieces together, and then I put the entire composition together on a plain piece of fabric. 
I see. Do, do you lay it down as you do that section, or do you wait until it's when all? I lay it down as I finish each little piece. So when this piece is complete, I lay it down on the foundation fabric. And then when the other piece is complete, I join them. So it's like a jigsaw puzzle, yes, sort of. Yes, yes. Yes. One thing I noticed, and we had a conversation about, is the different tones or values of the same fabric. Mm. Now, and that, and I'm noticing down here, but that led us into a conversation that you dye your own fabric. Yes. Now, why do you dye your own fabric? Um, I dye my own fabric because it's easier for me to control the values of the fabric. I, I usually work with um, the values more than the colors. So I want to be able to have a light value, a medium value, and a dark value. And it's, it's easier for me to dye it than to go to the store and try to match values in the store. And so that's the main reason I dye my fabrics. Well, that's going to become very obvious when we talk about some other mm -hmm. items up here. Mm -hmm. But I'm looking up here, and are these mostly commercial in here, or are these some of your own Some work? are dyed, some are commercial. OK. Mm -hmm. But now, I, you, we talk, and that's going to be important when we talk about the other type of figurative <laughs> art you do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have you, which way, which way do you want to grab this? Goes this way. Now this is the body part that we were talking about yes. a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. And as you look at it from the camera, this is an incredible job of hands. Yes. So the value, these are do you call this a color or not? Gray. It's gray. Yeah. But I'm noticing that you have and did you I have different values of um, gray in here and this this piece I didn't want to use um, colors I wanted it to be um, like more of a black and white or a monochromatic um, piece so it's just the same color dyed in different um, values less dye in each um, fabric mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and and then after you put the you didn't work from a photograph on this did you I actually did did you really yes I did work from a photograph and and then you quilted this? Yes, I, I quilted them, the pieces. These are small, tiny pieces. Every different um, value you see is a different piece. So these are all tiny pieces, and I quilted them to hold them down onto the background fabric. It's just beautiful. It's also courageous to have so much, neg I'm not sure if this is the right word, negative space? Yes. I. I sort of like a minimalistic um, approach to doing my artwork. I'm always trying to do it less than more. So that's why you see the negative space. I'm, I'm somebody who likes less than more. It's, it's beautiful. It's yeah. just beautiful. And then this is another figurative piece. Yes. I'm going to have you grab it the right way. And this way. And then you grab that way. OK. Okay. This is um, this is called splash, and this is um, wow. a, a hand cupping water in the hand, and it just splashes. A drop of water splashes, and and it just demonstrates how. This is very interesting to me. Uh, when I did this piece, I noticed for the first time how um, three dimensional a splash of water looks. Wow! Yes. This is just beautiful. Yeah. I don't remember having seen this before because I see your work outside of the mm. show and I don't remember I haven't this. shown this before. This is new work. Oh, is that right? Yes. Well, no wonder I haven't seen it. <laughs> it's just beautiful. I think also it's interesting. I just want the audience to see the back of your work. Mm -hmm. Hold that up on that side. Now, this honestly, you could let this roll as a piece of artwork. Yes, this was a surprise to me because I usually use the same fabric in front as the back. But in this, I somehow decided to use black, and it turned out that the black made it look like a mirror image of the, fa of the um, image on the front was mirrored on the back by the quilting. So I thought, um, that's very interesting. So I'm going to start using black on the back of all my work because I do a lot of stitching on the yes, front. And yes, it's, it's yes. mirrors it on the back when you use black. Yes, 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 yes. 
And it's all, in my mind, it's reversible. Mm -hmm. It really is. And it happened as an accident. I didn't plan to do it that way, but. So you're supposed to say, I worked really hard <laughs> <laughs> to get it that way. <laughs> now, um, when we, the other thing I'd like to mention is that you do a lot of abstract. Mm -hmm. And here's an example. This is really phenomenal. I'm hoping the camera has a good angle of this. It's cutting it off a little bit at the top. And you're, I'm going to have you move back for a little bit because I want the audience to see as much as you can. But this is an absolutely wonderful piece of artwork of a car. How did this come about? First of all, I, excuse me, could you um, describe what abstract means? Abstract, usually I have two forms of abstract that I work with. One form is just shapes and lines, mm -hmm. and it has no objective. I don't start with an object or a person or an image in mind. I just put together shapes and lines and colors to um, get a, a, a beautiful rep, um, presentation. And that's one form of abstraction that I do. And we'll be showing that in a few minutes. Yes. And the second form of abstraction that I do is I start with an image in mind and then I try to remove traces of the image by using shapes and colors to recreate that image. Well, you did that here. I, I'm look, I've looked at this quite a bit, and I, and I just find it very interesting to look at. Mm. And this is the piece that really demonstrates your hand-dyed fabrics. Yes. It show how it looks like you have, but you really have three colors. Yes. I, I hardly use more than three colors per piece. In this piece, for instance, I have just three colors, the orange here, the green, and the blue with some neutral colors, which are the grays, um, light grays, and whites. And those are um, just three colors, but then I have them in different shades, values, or tones. So although you see different um, fabrics in the piece, they are the same colors, but in different values. And that's why I like dyeing my own fabrics, because then I can have the same orange like we see here, but in different values. Now, that makes all the difference mm -hmm. in the world. Yes. It makes all the difference in the world. Mm -hmm. And I can, I never, I never understood that before, mm -hmm. when, um, even though I've been in your presence and have seen your work, I never understood it so clearly. Mm -hmm. And I never, I've never felt the need to dye my own fabric, but I'm starting to feel it. Mm -hmm. It's so interesting. And if we get a chance, we'll talk a little bit more about the process of dyeing your fabric. Because I understand you have a refrigerator just devoted to it. Yes. Because it would be really sad to drink the liquid <laughs> thinking it's orange juice. Uh, and, and where did this image come from? Um, I love, love, love classic cars. Mm, I, I love classic cars. So I take photographs of them wherever I see them. And so this is a photograph of a, a car that I saw somewhere. I took a photograph of it. and and I created this out of it. Do you go to car shows? I do. I love car shows. I do. I, I would like to buy every one of those mm -hmm. cars. Now, when we, so we're talking about abstract, mm -hmm. and this is... This one started with an object in mind, but then I have other pieces which are just shapes and colors. Which, and, is, which is and the... This is an example of a p an abstract piece that is just made up of two shapes, triangles and circles. Triangles and circles. Yes, if you look closely, you see that there's a triangle, that's a circle, and those are the only two shapes in here, just triangles and circles. These oh. are all triangles. Now you don't count, you count this as the background fact. I count that as the background. Because I was going to say, I do see a <laughs> rectangle. Oh, that's interesting. And so, and you just play with the fabric on your... Yes, I just... Actually, I just sketch these shapes and I arrange them on the paper until I feel like they're looking, I have a pleasing presentation, and then I start um, putting the um, fabric on, on the foundation. Oh, that, piece. isn't that interesting? Yes. And you, this is, very, this is uh, an interesting, this is your quilting, this is what you did or is this a design in your machine? No, I, this is freehand quilting. I stitched it freehand. This is outstanding because I'm I'm struggling with freehand quilting, and you did this all freehand. Yes. Wow. 
I just want to let the audience know that this is good. Mm -hmm. Wow. And oh, look what you did. Her, your back is equally interesting. Mm -hmm. Isn't now what made you decide to do these doodads on the back? I, I just thought that if the front is interesting, why not the back? Because the back has my label. Yes. So if yes. you're going to turn to the back and look at the label, you should have something nice to look at. Good point. Mm -hmm. Very good point. Can you grab the other um, piece? This is the mm -hmm. same piece in a different. Oh, isn't that interesting? Yes. That is the same piece. Oh, this that's is upside down. Excuse me. In there. Okay. So How this, about you hold that? There we go. I'm not sure where I got There we go. Yep. So what this is the same piece in a different um, color um, scheme. This is a blue scheme and this is just neutral colors. But the same piece, it's the same design. That's very interesting. That is, that is, a, that's an interesting study to do. Mm -hmm. That is very, very interesting. Now, um, we talk about uh, representational too is your third style. Mm -hmm. And underneath here, we have an example of representational. And, ooh, look, at this is wild on the back. <laughs> I didn't see that before, wow. This is wax print on the back. Wax print? Yes, this is wax um, print. I don't think back. I understand that. This is print, this is fabric from Africa. Oh. And that's a process they use to um, make the fabric, it's called wax print. Very nice. Do you have a lot of this fabric? I have some of it, yeah. Because it's beautiful. Yes. It's just beautiful. How did you get it from Africa? Did you go there? No, I got this. I got someone brought it to me from Africa. Oh, how nice. Yeah. So this is called representational. This is representational. My representational pieces are works that I actually saw something and I'm trying to depict the same thing. And I, then you have the process right here? Yes, I do. For example, if you started with, these are vases that I have in my house and cups that I drew on a piece of paper and then I traced it on a tracing paper this way. I arranged them in a, in a way that I thought was pleasing. So I start with this on a tracing paper and then I I get my fabrics that I want to use and I start cutting them out. So each of these pe each of these pieces is cut out in fabric. So this piece here is this piece right here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then this part here is this part right here. So I cut them all out and then I try to I fix them, I fix them to the background. This is the same fabric that I used on the hand series. Now this is hand dyed. It's hand dyed. Did you do it? Yes, they are all hand dyed. Wow, yes. wow. And so I'm noticing here, is this two sewn together? Or are you just, you glued I, it? I glued them together. Wow. I glued them together. So this forms the part, the one part and this is part of the other part coming through here. Yes, yes, yes. And then the next step after this. And the next step after this is to stitch them down. You can see that I started stitching them down. So you stitch them down to hold them because the glue is not permanent. So I stitch them down to hold it. And then after I've held them all down, I put a, a piece of batten in the back and the backing fabric, which is this, so I sandwich the batten between the back and the front, hold them together, and then you quilt. You make your, um, you draw your stitches, your lines, your circles, your shapes, whatever you want with your sewing machine. When you're done with that, you trim it up and you bind the edges and you're done. That's all. That's so it. How long does it take you to complete a piece? It takes me a while because usually I leave them on the wall like this. I'll leave it on my design wall for a while because I want to be sure this is what I want to do. Sometimes I come in and I change a little piece. I, I might change this color to a different color. I keep looking at it till I feel like I have what I want before I finish it up. So sometimes it takes me 
it can take me months to finish a piece. This piece right here in the front here, mm -hmm. it took me almost a year to finish. Point to that piece again. And this piece here. Your, your mic, so just be careful. This piece okay, here. Okay, right. Yes. That took me almost a year to finish because I did not start with a, a plan in mind. I was just putting colors and shapes together to create something pleasing. So I didn't have a plan in mind, and so I'll put a piece on the board and leave it and go away for a week, come back, and look at how it relates to the other pieces on the wall, move them around, and I kept doing that till I got something that I was happy with. So that yeah. took a whole year to do. Wow, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. But I also understand exactly what you're saying about it, you need to stand back, look at it, and see that as a distance. Now, is there a part of the process that is your favorite part? My favorite part, I will say, is designing. It's starting to design the, uh, the artwork. That is my favorite part because I make a lot of decisions at that point where the shape should be, what should be next to it, how to treat it when, I'm, when I get to the sewing part. So I think that part takes most of the time. And then my other favorite part is the end, when I see the work, because it's always different from what I imagined it was going to be. It's always oh. a surprise to see the finished work. That is So the beginning and the end are my favorite parts. That is interesting. I think when I um, work on my my projects, I think my favorite part is just the fabric. I'm I'm happy. I don't even really have to ever make anything. I'm happy just touching my fabric, looking at my fabric, and thinking about it. Mm. Oh, you mean I have to sew it? <laughs> you know, it, I just love that mm. that part and that process in it. Mm. Now, do you have a, a sketchbook? Do you use work? Like I that? do. I do use a sketchbook, and I actually do have my sketchbook right here which I, is small enough to keep in my, in my um, purse, and I carry it around with me everywhere I go. Whenever I have a chance, I sketch something. Now, when you were here at the studio, did you sketch anything while you were outside, or were you just busy doing other things? I did not sketch. Okay, fine. And you're not using this time to sketch me? No, I'm okay, not. Okay, <laughs> fine. May I look at that for sure. a second? Go ahead. So this is a small one. This isn't like it's, just... Yes, it's a very small one. I did not think I would be able to put a whole composition on a small um, sheet of paper have to have like this. It because my name is covering it. Okay, so you hold it, open it up, and I'm not sure how, how close they can get in. But um, actually, I think I have this piece here sketched somewhere in the sketch. This is very detailed. Mm. This is very, very detailed. What and and how how did you learn to draw like this? I just learned it. I I read a lot on the internet, and I just I just practiced. This piece here, I was looking at a paneling on a wall, and I thought I saw a face on the wall, and I started to sketch it. Wow. Very, very, very interesting. Now, I know you exhibit your work. Where has your work been exhibited? I have exhibited at the um, Slater Museum. I have work at Spectrum Gallery right now. And I have some exhibitions coming up in New Britain. And I do exhibit around here in Connecticut. Do you give classes or lessons or anything like that? No, I do not. Is that something that you're interested in doing, or no, you do not? <laughs> not right now. Not right now. Not right now? You're not, not right interested? Now. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but if anybody was interested in seeing more of your work, how could they do that? I have a website. My website is Clara Narte, my name. Spell your name for us. C L A R A N A R. T E Y dot com. And that's my website. And you can see all my work. You can see what I'm doing, what I'm working on today. I, I try to update my blog every week. And and in your blog, if you have an I I signed up for your blog and uh, what kind of information you give out a lot you have two a couple another blog but you you give out a, a lot of information on your blog. Yes, I talk a lot about um, textile art and I try to um, show people what textile art is all about and answer some 
um, questions, the frequently asked questions about textile art. How do you hang your artwork? Uh, how do you collect art? If you want to be a collector of textile art, how do you do it? I answer all those questions on my blog. And then I show my work in progress. So like this one, I would have a photograph of it showing how I started, the sketch with which I started, um, the point at which I am in the work, and then when I finish it, I show the finished work too. How did you get started in all of this? By reading. I actually, I started because I bought a sewing machine and I wanted to find what to do with a sewing machine. I didn't know what to do with my sewing machine, so I started reading online about things you can do with your sewing machine. And then I discovered textile art and I just fell in love with it. Now that's interesting, you had the sewing machine first. Yes. Usually people fall in love first and then get the sewing machine. No, I, it's the other way around. I bought a sewing machine, I didn't know what to do with the sewing machine. I bought the sewing machine because I wanted to embroider um, something for a friend. A friend needed embroidery, so I got a sewing machine that has an embroidery component. And I did the embroidery for her, and then after that, the sewing machine was just sitting there. I didn't know what to do with it. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. So what is your blog, what is your website again, or your blog site? It's clarinarty.com, and you can click on my blog and sign up to follow me and get all my updates. I update every week. And then they can go to a studio, or go to any of the galleries and see some and of you your see, work. And you see the events page, it shows you where I'm exhibiting, where you can see my work. It's all up there in, on the blog. Well, it's wonderful. And if you're interested in uh, asking her some questions and you forget her website, you can always contact me at jmdteach at comcast.net or go to my website, classroomconnections365.com. Clara, thank you. It was a joy having you on, and I love your work. Thank you, Jen, for having me. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.